Hey everybody, this is Skater Zero. Uh, this is going to be a video on how to build or how the uh, analog to digital converter works. Um, if you haven't seen the introductory video, you should go check that out. I show you sort of how it, uh, you know generally functions. That uh, it takes an analog value and spits out a digital value that represents how strong that analog signal is. So I'm going to show you first on the two bit because it's a little bit easier to explain. Uh, how it works. So what I have here is a bunch of um, levers that I can pull. So this gives me a signal strength of 1 here, which is the input. This gives me a strength of 2, and that gives me a strength of 3. And then the output is visualized in these two bits. So that's why it's a 2-bit. This is the first bit. It's either 0 or 1. Uh, 1 being the lamp on, 0 being the lamp off. Since they're both on, the way I calculate the strength of that number there is 1 times 2 plus 1 times 1 uh, is 3, so you add them all up, and that gives you the grand total, which I knew was 3 because I had set it up so that it would be. Uh, when it's 2, you get 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1 gives you 2, and likewise 1 gives you uh, 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1, and 0 is just 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1. So that's the 2-bit ADC in a nutshell. The way it works is you have to take an input, and um, I'll sort of show you. Let me hop in through the middle here. So this is the input block, the same one that is, you know, I, I, I knew the value because I had set it up, so it would be either 0, 1, 2, or 3. Right now it's 0. And you feed it through a bunch of um, comparators, which are just in their normal modes, and that sort of forms the backbone. And then what you have over here is a bunch of comparators and repeaters coming off the side. And then what you have up top, this is actually just a mechanism for getting the correct value uh, that you need coming into some of these um, comparators. So this is a torch giving me 15 here and 14, 13, 12, 11, Oops, 10, I got a little lag here. Uh, but yeah, so the idea is it goes all the way down and this value right here is 2. So the analog value of that redstone dust is 2, which feeds into this uh, into this um, comparator. This comparator is just pushing the value straight through of 2. It compares to its inputs, which are nothing, so it puts an output of 2 into this comparator. So the main idea is you got to take the value here compare it to the first uh, number 2. If it's greater than or equal to it, then you're going to need that 2 to build that number. So we're basically building up a number using bits, zeros and ones. So this 0 or 1 is whether or not we need a 2 to make that number. So if the number is less than 2, you obviously don't want to use a 2 because then you're, you're already too big. So if the number is 1, which I'll flip on 1, what happens is this bit doesn't turn on because you don't need a, a 1, as in this bit does not need to be a 1 in order to get the grand total analog value of 1 because all you need is a 1 at this bit, so 1 times 1 gives you 1. So what you have here is a value of 1 being just passed through, so this is a comparator. It's comparing its inputs, which are nothing, and the in, obviously the input is going to be greater than or equal to zero, which are its inputs, and it puts that value here. So it's just passed through, puts a value of one here. So what first happens is this comparator says, is the value one greater than or equal to the side input, which here is two. This value is always two because it's set up that that torch will always be putting a value of two here. So this comparator is just pushing a two into here. So it says, is one greater than or equal to 2. And it would say, no, it's not greater than or equal to 2. So nothing comes out here. And this value then goes into this comparator. And it says, OK, well, is 1 greater than or equal to what I've got over here, which is 0? It is, so put the value of 1 here. So it's just saying, allow that 1 to pass to continue on down this backbone. So then that 1 goes into this um, comparator, which just pushes the value one block forward. So this is that same value one, gets pushed through, and then it comes into this comparator, which 
this value is made the same way. So this is all the way down here. That's a value of two, that's three. This repeats the three, repeats the three, repeats the three. So this is a value of three, that has a value of two, and this one has a value of one. So we allowed that one to pass through the previous stage. That one is now here, and this comparator says, okay, well, is one greater than or equal to one? It is, so put one here. And then that one goes into a uh, repeater, which is now converting to a digital signal. It says, yes, you do need a one in order to recreate a one, which is why that's on. So if I turn this off now, the first stage doesn't change because it's comparing now zero to two, same stuff happens, it allows the zero to pass through down the chain, and then when the zero gets to this comparator, it says, okay, well, is zero greater than or equal to one? It's not, so the output is zero. You follow that all the way back, this is zero, because you don't have any, any, uh, any you know, to make zero, you don't need any bits to be on. So now if I switch to two, you'll notice that this one is off, and this one is on. So to get that to happen, what you actually are doing is you say, okay, well this value is two, we push it through here using that to get a two. Now we're comparing two to this value, which is always two, and it says, you know, this comparator is saying is two greater than or equal to two. And yes, it is, so put a two here. So that two then feeds into here because it says, because the value is greater than or equal to two, I'm gonna need a two to build it. So I've got a two, and then what it does is, this value is two, this value is one, this value is zero. So what I've actually done is subtracted two from the original value. So I take two and I say, all right, well, I'm gonna need at least a two to build it. What's left over is a zero. So what's left over is right here, that's this two minus two. So that's zero, that gets passed through. Now this, what this is doing is, it's saying normally what happened was when this was off because the value wasn't greater than or equal to two, it was turning this off, allowing this comparator to pass the value through. So if when this value was one, this was off, as was this. So the comparator was allowing the one to pass through. But now, because this is two, and this comparator says, well, two is greater than or equal to two, it outputs a value which shuts this off. It's basically just not allowing that one to pass through because one is not greater than or equal to 15, which is the value that's being pushed into this uh, comparator. So that one doesn't pass through, but the zero does because that's what's left over after you subtracted two. And then the zero passes through. And the reason that you don't have a one turned on here because the remainder is zero, which means all you needed was a two to recreate the value two. So that's a zero, meaning you now have a two, that block is on, you don't have a one because you don't need it. You've already recreated everything that you, uh, that you needed to to create two. So now if I flip this to three, this value is now three. So if this value is three, it passes through, that's three. Now it's getting compared again to two because that's still two. It says, okay, three is greater than or equal to two, so put that value here. So that value is now three. That value is three, so it says, all right, well, you're gonna need at least a two to recreate that, so I've got two. But now the remainder is, if this is three, I subtract two, so that's, this is a value three, that's gonna be two, that's gonna be one. Uh, this value one is just being pushed up to here through the uh, comparator, and this is doing the same thing, it's just shutting off that one. So the value three that came in is not allowed to pass through this. It's allowing the one to pass through. So three, two, one, the one passes through, that's what's the remainder. After we've gotten the two, that one goes through this. It comes in here, that one says, okay, well, is one greater than or equal to one? That value is always one. Yes, so put a one there, and then that just gets turned into a digital signal. You need that one in order to recreate the entire thing. So that's how a two-bit one works. The idea for a, um, a full four-bit, which I will show over here, is the same exact idea. So I've set this up. It's the same idea that you know I just I can control what the signal level is here, and then instead of having two bits, I now have four bits. So one bit, two bit, three bit, four bit, and these now have you know the same idea that it's powers of two. So if I flip. 
the 10 on, I'm going to need a 1, which is the lamp on, times 8, plus 0 times 4, plus 1 times 2, plus 0 times 1, and that gives me 10. And then let's say the value is 5, I need a 4 and a 1, so that is the uh, binary representation or the digital representation of the value here, which is 5. So that's how that, um, you know, the same, same idea. The, uh, the only thing now is you have to first compare to 8. So the 8 is the first number that you have to compare to. So if I do, let's just do, um, let's see, let's just do, yeah, let's do 11 as an example. So 11, we're going to need an 8 to recreate an 11 because the uh, 11 is greater than 8. So 11 comes in here, that's the input. It does the same thing, it pushes it forward, it compares to this value, which is 8. It says 11 is greater than or equal to 8, so put it out here. That gets pushed out as a digital signal to that block, and then you subtract 8. So this distance, that, you know, sending that signal 11 is now 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Sorry, I'm, I think I miscounted there. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. So now 3 gets pushed along here. The same thing happened, we have this uh, repeater, which is closing off the 11 from getting through the rest of the backbone. So the only the remainder 3 gets to pass through. So 3 passes through, then you compare it to the value here, which is 4. And you do the same thing, so you compare, you say, all right, well, 3 is not greater than or equal to 4, so we don't need a 4, because otherwise you'd add 8 and 4, and you'd have 11, you're already too big. So this one is off. So it's saying 3, which is the value here, is not greater than or equal to 4, so don't output anything here. Don't power up that lamp. And then don't shut off the comparator here. Allow that 3 to pass through the backbone. Uh, this 0 doesn't pass through, obviously, so the 3 continues on. Then you compare it to this value, which is a 2, and you know, likewise, you're doing the same thing, just longer chain, that's all. And the same thing is this, this top bar is just a way of getting that value to be 8, this value to be 4, this value to be 2, and that value to be 1. So this is just a... Uh, you know, just a big long chain of repeater, I mean, uh, comparators just to give you the right values. So that's how that works. Um, if you want to recreate it, you don't have to follow this exact same schematic, but that's the idea. Um, if you get the idea, then, um, you know, you can kind of recreate this. Hopefully, uh, this makes sense. It's a lot of different things all crammed together, but the idea is the same as the two bit one. So. That's how the um, analog to digital works. Um, if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to be doing the digital to analog uh, um, tutorial next. So if, uh, if you did like this video, let me know. And uh, I'll see you later.